Hey YouTube, welcome to the video. I'm Elliot and I like to 3D print things. I'm also a fan of the out of doors. And those two specialities don't quite intermix a lot. Haven't been out of doors much, but I'd like to rectify that. So today I'm going to finish building this. To the uninitiated, this is a spinning rod, specifically the hilt and or handle of said spinning rod. I printed this in a previous video, which you can see here. It is printed out of TPEE -E, flexible filament, as well as PETG filament. PETG is green and the flex was black. So in addition to 3D printing practical things for the out of doors, sometimes you have to make some tools like this. This is a rod lathe pretty sweet. You know why? Because it's made out of an old Ikea shelf. Some runners for slide out drawers and a 3D printed rod chuck which you can see there. This is a three jaw chuck. It's printed in PETG and PLA. This right here is a sewing machine motor from a sewing machine so it has a foot pedal and then it's just hooked up with a series of different pulleys and o-rings but it's just to demonstrate that 3d printing can not only help you build the things you want to build but also help you build the tools to build those things stay tuned hidey ho good neighbor <laughs> So this is a workbench, table, whatever you want to call it. This is in my basement, aka workshop, aka man cave. It has these things which they refer to as dogs. I don't quite know why they call them dogs. Uh, don't really look like dogs to me. But you use them to put in here and you hold work pieces this way. This, um, I don't really need to do that. So there's a guy online that reviewed these workbenches and uh, I'll link to his YouTube video. He created an STL where you can print out these uh, little stops that go in there so you don't lose anything. And I thought that was pretty nifty. And this is the rod lathe I had showed you in the introduction. So a little bit better view of it. Goes like that, thread stays on here, rod's in the middle. So I got to thinking, how am I going to put this in a position that I want it? Super glue that to the bottom of this MDF. Not, that's a little too far. I'm okay with it like right meow. CA glue. So then we also have to take into account holding the rod up, right? Upright, yeah. I'm going to probably redesign these uh, for 3D printed versions. Um, in the future. So this is a modified three jaw chuck. Three jaws. One, two, three. And when you tighten down this, there we go, tighten down this little spot here, it actually closes those jaws in, centers up your workpiece so that you don't have any slop. All I've done, this is an STL available on Thingiverse. I will post it here. But all I did was modify the STL to accept a half inch 13 thread bolt and then put it on my rod lathe here so that it spins like this. So what we got here is the foot pedal. This is for like your lights, floor lamps, it's a dimmer switch. So if we just hit this now with the dimmer switch all the way down, 
it's not very fast, but if we crank the dimmer switch up, we can get it to go a little bit quicker, right? And then we can bring it all the way up. Probably want it somewhere a little slower than that. Looking at about right there to, to wrap a rod. Throw a rod in there and, and let her rip. You guys seeing this modern day marvel of engineering? Made this like six or seven years ago. Uh, yeah, it's not much to look at, but you know what? Works. So I hear you saying, well, Elliot, that's not very long, you know? Like, uh, what happens if you get a long rod? You know? And your, your rod extends past past this deal here. Like, all you got is that. Well, I hear ya. Now I hear ya. Also, don't like the sass. Yeah! Pull that out of the old garage. There we go. Smarty pants. Look at that. Got all sorts of throw now. In there, something like that, and then we uh, hit the foot pedal. See what breaks. Nothing. Looks pretty good. A little off. Not bad though. So what this is going to do is this spring is going to push down and provide tension on this spool so it doesn't backlash on us. Then it's going to go down to this eyelet and that's where we're going to control where it goes to. Pull fast. Pull fast on that. I'm going to wrap it a few times with the loop out. I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to put it through the loop. I'm going to have this come in and just start to be pulled through the wraps I just did. Okay. Then I'm going to come in and cut it off close to that. Okay, then get it in position I need, and then I'm just going to pull that tag in under. I bought a whole kit of broken fly rod tips. And what I do is I just end up taking off the guides for those and using those as hook keeps on any rod. Right in the middle there. Then we're just going to add a little gold accent, and then we're just going to hold that while we wrap the green. Hold it right next to it. Hopefully without it coming out. I'll finish it up by going to kind of where I think it should be compared to this side. I think that's about right. Well, thanks for watching. I like to do kind of tool 3D printing stuff sometimes. I think this was pretty pretty indicative of that. I like practical prints. You, you can print awesome stuff on a 3D printer that's just super cool to look at and everything. See Sabertooth video. But um, there's something about printing something you can actually use and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I thought it went great. So I just got a shipment in from Make Lure. So we got some casting videos coming up. So if you're into that kind of thing or you like rod building and see part two, 
you know, in three years when I actually do it. Feel free to subscribe. Love to have you. Keep your amps up and your filament dry. And also tight lines and heavy nets. Alright, take 957.